as I get it turned off here, it'll be all right. There we go. That's all right. That's okay. How many's been, uh, get this turned on here. I keep telling me I need to use a mic. <laughs> get it up a little closer. Well, you do. Get it, it up a little. Start recording. I know, I know, I know. It makes me a little nervous. Been through a lot of changes the last. He's telling you. Oh, this way. There a little you closer. Closer. Good. Is that better? <laughs> I'm just still here at this game, guys. I just got enough way to pull it back when you get that hot thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I pull back when I get the hat on. So when I laugh, I guess I'll pull back. <laughs> my ear is out there. <laughs> How many of you are so glad that's a new day? Hallelujah. How many are you glad tomorrow will be a new day? Amen. How many are you going to be glad the next day will be a new day? Amen. How many are you glad that His mercies are new every morning? Amen. <laughs> How many of you just love Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, if it wasn't for Jesus, I lost his, I would lose my mind, but you know, it's okay because still even then I can receive his. <laughs> Because we do, if you know Jesus, you do have the mind of Christ. And sometimes the world will tell you out there that you're silly, you, you're forgetful, you're this and that, and you just got to remind yourself all the time that you have the mind of Christ. Amen. And aren't you thankful that Jesus is ever present with us? Aren't you thankful that he never leaves us? That he never forsakes us. How so we know? always have a helper. And I need a helper today standing up here today. <laughs> I feel like a transplanted plant. Tomorrow I'm believing I go back. I've been, not been able to drive for a couple months. And tomorrow I go to the doctor. And I've been believing all along I'll have my wheels back and my wings back. So I'm just all the praise God. That I've been shifted here, shifted there, shifted there. And I feel kind of like this little plant that wants to kind of just get a little place to settle again. So thank God my work, we were working 60 hours a week, and now I've got all four days this week wow. completing my uh, appointment. And I'm so excited. It was so nice just to be, to be with my husband because... During this time, I've not been able to be with my partner over here. I married him to be a partner. <laughs> so I, I feel like i got to ground tape back home and just to kind of settle down in my own home and being married since January. But you know, God keeps reminding me that's still not my permanent home anyway. It's up there. And to not even that home there that I'm in to try to get adjusted to and new marriage, that's still not even my home. And we got to be, sometimes we get so temple minded that we can't be heavenly minded just because the circumstances and other things going around us. But, you know, he says, lift up your eyes to the hills. And we know that hill. We know that hill of Moriah that Jesus crucified died for us so that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. Amen. And so, my scripture today, I'm, I'm, what I've really been wanting to study on the gifts lately, the gifts. And all of you in here are all a gift to me. You're all a gift to me. And you, hopefully, I'm a gift to you. And we need to really start operating in the gifts that we have. And we need to start operating together more functionally as a body. How many knows when your body's out of sync in the physical? <laughs> it doesn't work like it should. <laughs> and you just kind of have one of those days that's out of sort, but we know we got to keep walking in the Spirit anyway. And so the scripture, I'm going to start out with Psalms 133. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest, that came down upon the collar and skirts of his garment, consecrating the whole body. And a lot of times when we think of that scripture, we think of just getting along with one another, just getting along. 
But how many of you, if you have accepted Christ in your life and you have come into your to the kingdom of God, that you all have, you're all gifts and you have giftings. And a lot of times when we're thinking of unity, we're thinking of just getting along with my brother and sister, getting along with my co-worker, getting along with my wife, getting along with my children, getting along in that way. But really what we need to start focusing, honestly, as the army of God, is start really honing our gifts and start hooking up with one with another. Because you know we sent them out two by two when they were the witness and when they were to get the lost. Start finding out, if you don't know your gifts, what your gifts are, number one, who to go to if you need a certain gift, because we've got different gifts of the body, which I'm going to run through, because we're all specialty people. <laughs> There's not one. The Spirit has all the gifts, but we know that He distributes them to each of us as He wills. They're available at all times, and I truly believe that he can use any of the gifts, anytime, any way he wants, in any vessel that has a, a willingness to yield to those giftings and to walk in faith in them. And just like Debbie here, she's got the gift of, of praise and worship. And I found out when I was back there that her and Pastor was harmonizing with the gifts. And she was sharing a little bit last night of the giftings flowing there together up here. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. She said she's a long time coming. She said 25 years? Yeah, pretty much. 25 years <laughs> to get that together. And I know Debbie's got a very prophetic gift. I know she's wanting to flow. I know she's wanting to flow more and, and movement and movement. And I know she's one because, you know, there's artistic gifts too where you can just follow in the dance and not everything's the words. And I know you want to also too, just, just in the crazy gifts, to go maybe paint a picture or whatever. I don't know what you want to So. <laughs> no, that's funny. It really is. So. <laughs> and she, because she's wanting to expand what she, God's put in her. And it's time for the, the expansion of the gifts. To, to working together to bring forth the best. This Amen. is the best yet. Yeah, the best is yet to come. So it's time to for, bring forth our best because we know everything that he has put in us before we were even created, before we were thought of. He has put everything within us Amen. that he knew we were going to do. All the pages of the books of our life was already written. Who we were going to minister to, uh, who we were going to marry, even you're going to divorce. He knows all things. So, but anyway, it's time for the flowing of the giftings to come together like a river. And so many times we don't understand each other's giftings and we can even hinder one another in the giftings by not understanding one another even in our own giftings and then be able to prefer and defer to one another as a well-going machine. It's like, okay, you step up to the plate. You got that gift. I'm done here. Now I'll step back and now I honor you with your gifting. I'm done. Like the gift of mercy, uh, as an example. The gift of mercy, the gift of mercy, they can just tug a bleeding heart. <laughs> they can just sympathize. They can empathize. They can just you know, I, I know how you feel, sister. I know how you feel, brother. And they can really feel the pain. They can really feel the pain of that person. And a lot of times they may be walking around a, a gift of mercy and it's like they think there's something wrong with them. And really, they're getting all this hurt and they're getting all this pain and they're getting from this outside atmosphere here because we know there's spirits that operate. We all have a human spirit. We all There's the Holy Spirit, and then there's other spirits out there that we need to be discerning of that aren't godly. And so, but a mercy spirit will pick up pain, and they'll be walking around. If they don't have discernment, which we all need to pray for, a great greater discernment in our lives so we can discern, even in our own giftings, what's me, what's the Holy Spirit, and when I'm to operate, and went up and shut up. <laughs> and so then we could be that well-oiled machine flowing out there, like I said, like a river. Like a river. A river, it just flows. I mean, unless somebody dams it up. Then it just flows. And an ocean out there, that's what we need to be coming. Not even much of that ocean out there to be humanity, to hurting people. 
And so a lot of times when we think of this unity, we're just thinking about getting along. You know, that's just the old carnal flesh because we look at people maybe in carnal eyes, we get offended, then we got to defend, we get offended. And, you know, it's time that we start growing up in the body of Christ that we don't even get offended. And with the giftings come, you know, certain giftings where we're going to have to come up to the maturity of saints when other brothers and sisters have a rebuke or an exhorting or whatever it may be that we receive it in love. Now, does they test the spirits? We know that there are people out there, you know, that maybe they have a word that doesn't bear witness to our spirit. But I don't know about you, but there's times I've been given something and Oh, because of old foolish pride, and that's all it is. It's like, I, you, you know, you want to defend yourself. You want to give reasons why you can or why you didn't or why, whatever. And you want to defend yourself. And it's like, we've got to stop defending ourselves because the gates of hell are real out there. And there's a lost and dying generation that doesn't even know him. And until we come into the fullness of our giftings and come together as an army of the God... Working as that well-known machine, we got people out there that don't even know Jesus. People that don't even know Him. Because hell is real. And there's people going that are real. And there are brothers and sisters that are falling down today that need an encouraging word, that need lifted up. We don't know what our brothers and sisters go through. We really, truly do not know what each one of us go through today. We know that it says gross darkness is covering the earth. Now, we don't center on that, but we do feel that darkness coming. But it says His glory will cover His people. But we need to be those people. And he, I'm going to read you the scripture, Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. I'm glad for those that showed. And that assembly could be a Bible study. It could just be hanging out at a party sometimes just because a brother and a sister need to talk. And, and maybe just need some prayer, whatever that may be. Ourselves together is the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day of approaching. Now there is the gift of exhortation. But in this scripture, what I see that we all can be exhorters. <laughs> we all can be exhorters. There is the gift of mercy, but it says be merciful. We can all do the gift of mercy. You may not have the gifting, but we all can be merciful. And so, as we see that day approaching, we know that's the day of the Lord. And we know every day we do have life, which we have life. We have life in us, and we have it abundantly in Jesus. We are coming to that day. And we're all going to have to take account of even the giftings that we have in us and how we are using them uh, properly. And we need to find out how they function within us and identify not just only who we are in Jesus Christ, but the giftings that he has given us and how they function, how they operate. And also the pitfalls. How many knows there's pitfalls on every side of that? Because we know sometimes we can operate in the soulish realm and not necessarily or, or to walk in the spirit, step in the spirit. But, you know, sometimes... When we're not operating the gift, we may start out in spirit, get in that little soul ram. We should shut it off a little quicker. And now we almost start getting our opinions or our experiences or whatever it may be, even when we use our giftings. They're all good for a certain purpose, I believe that. That's what makes it so varied and so different. So even like the gift of exhortation from how we come from different backgrounds, we may all exhort different people differently just for the fact or where we come from, or backgrounds, and all this and that. So there's nothing wrong with that, because God knows we've all come, I mean, but he loves the whole world. We're thankful for that. He loves the whole world. But an exhorter, they're the ones that come alongside. They're the ones that bring comfort. But they're the ones that also likes to have a plan for the future. Not just a mercy gift that says, I know where you are, and where you are, brother, and this and that, and they have compassion for. And they're the ones that weep with those that weep. The exhorter, they're sitting there saying, let's get on with the program here. <laughs> Can we get past that? Haven't you cried long enough? Haven't you mourned long enough? We want to get you up and get you going. And so the exhorter, I don't know, can I have a volunteer up here? <laughs> 
somebody. Come on out. That's what the exhorter does. But the exhorter, they like to come alongside. And they see this one. They're not walking as good as they were in their spiritual walk. Now they're out there to condemn, but they want to come alongside. And the exhorter, they don't even know a whole lot of information because they're face to face people. They look at their face. And they see if the countenance of that face, you know, like David said, his countenance of his face was. It was just down. He says, why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you cast down? Have you ever been cast down in your soul? That's why he says, he restored your soul. And exhorters, they come, and they do that part, and they're going to say, hey, it's going to be okay. That's the first thing they do. They're not going to get in all the pain. And that's the mercy gift. And you may have both. I have both. It's like, oh, i got to stop the mercy and get on with it. You can leave them right where they're at. <laughs> but the exhorter will come like said, hey, God's got a plan for you. Hey, it's a good plan. It's a plan that's so good because he's good. And he hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. And his love for you is everlasting. And, and as they're walking alongside, they're just going to pick you up. And all of a sudden, you just start walking. Yeah. And your hands up. You got a smile on your face. Just like Monique back there. That's right. She, <laughs> like that she didn't even know what happened to me. She rode past my house and smiled. I had um, encountered somebody that was messing with me, and hurt me, harmed me, <laughs> and um, many, I had dreamed it, and she was in, she was in my dream. And, um, right after I dreamed it, I was supposed to go to work that day. I got woken up and pulled out of my house, and because um, I was trying to do the right thing, the next right thing, and I pulled down to Savannah's, and. There was somebody there. God knew what was going to happen. He told me, stay right here. It was between him and him. It became, that's where it ended up coming. Between him and that man. So, but then the Negro by, and in my dream, it had something to do with the West Side. And it said, God said, in my dream, and then she, here she came right by. You have loved ones on the West Side. <laughs> and, and she was, I seen your face. I've seen your husband with you, but I've seen your face, and then here you come by the line, you smiled and waved at me, and I was like, your face this day, and you want a word. New day! New day! New day! New day! New way! The old ways, it's not working, it's guarded. How many of you know a habit was good, and then it just wasn't good no more? Wasn't useful no more. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to do new things. He, he says, behold, all things become new. All things. Even the way we do things. I mean, right there. I, I'll be honest, I got up here today. Uh, uh, you asked Tim. I stayed up all night. I wrestled. I worried. It's like, God, I don't know about this. Pastor so much more experienced at this. And I said, I'm just a rookie. <laughs> Should have known better than that. Should have known better. 
but God doesn't condemn us. You know, my favorite scripture is Romans 8, 28. We know all things work together for good to them who love God and call according to His purpose. He'll use your down sittings and He'll use your uprisings. You know, even when the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, I don't know if you remember, but when they were up on there and they seen Jesus and all His glory, well, Peter, he's always the excited one. Peter is. He's the excited one. He's all the emotional one. Hey, hey, let's just build here. Let's just stay here. This is that good feeling. And us absorbers are kind of like that. We kind of want to stay right there. <laughs> let's just build here. Let's just stop here. This is a good place. And sometimes we can stay too long there. And Jesus saying, oh, the plan, my plan ain't been fulfilled yet. He still hasn't gone to the cross. But Peter, he was willing to build tents, so let's just stop here. This is good. This is great. But how much, how do you all know when God's got more for you yet? It's not a stopping point. You know, a lot of times we want to move on when it's the, the, what we call a bad day. But really, we don't have bad days. We have bad moments. But all our days are good. All our days are blessed if you know Jesus. All our days are blessed because He is in them. He is in them, and that's what makes them good. But we, you know, the scripture says we would have fainted unless we'd seen the goodness of the Lord and the living. And just as an absorber, that one that's kind of broken down, this and that, they're, they're, they got their eyes to the ground and they can't see. They can't see. They can't see. An absorber's got to help them to see. An absorber's got to encourage them. An absorber's got to give them hope. And I tell you what, as the darkness is growing, it says so much more as you see that day approaching. And Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily. So it's a command. How many, how many of you need? And that don't mean you're like, oh, we got to get down to the pit. But how many of you know we all need encouraging daily? We all need exhorting daily. So I, I, I exhort you today. You know, David said, you know, all the men were... This is at Ziglag. We're talking about David. He had encouraged himself. <laughs> Sometimes people, he wants us to grow up, get into maturity, and to start encouraging ourselves with the words of the Lord, what he says about us. Not go cry on somebody. Not go call somebody up. Not go text them and say, hey, I'm just out of bed. Now, there's nothing wrong with prayer, and I'm not condemning anybody. But sometimes we do have to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Because if we're to exhort one another daily, what if that person showed up I, and you were to encourage him and you was having a self-pity party? <laughs> I don't know. How many, how many, I know I've missed opportunities. I've wasted days in a self-pity party before. I've wasted days in such a, maybe weeks. I know one time I was so traumatized I didn't think I'd ever get back up. But it's like God. And how many knows you can get sick of yourself? <laughs> you just get sick of yourself. And so you've got to get, you've got to start encouraging yourself. You've got to start getting in the Word. His words are spirit and life. And you've got to start getting them in your spirit. So when we start getting that, oh, the moldy grubs or whatever, we can say, hey, let's stop this. Hey, let's stop this. I might miss an opportunity to speak to someone today because I'm so into myself. I'm so into what's going on with me. And God wants me to get out of myself to help somebody today. And how many of you have been depressed before? I have been in depression. But yet, I've been so old before, and I've known there's times that somebody would call and, you know, to yourself, you thought, I got nothing to give up. <laughs> but how do you know it's not you giving it anyway. It's the Jesus in you. And if you've got Jesus in you, you always got something to give to somebody. So it's not so much about coming out of your resources, out of your soul realm, but He is a spirit. And His spirit always gives life. And you can always give something to someone because of the Jesus that's in you. How many know that Jesus was an exhorter? He's, he's got all the gifts. He was an exhorter. Look what He did for Peter. After Peter denied him three times, he didn't go around and say, Peter, why did you blow it? Why didn't you trust me, Peter? You know, some people like to always bring up <laughs> what you're doing wrong. And exhorter goes beyond that. 
Because they want to give you a future and they want to give you a hope. A hope. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you can get your hope back up, you can start operating in the faith that he's called you with. And we all have that grain of a mustard seed of faith. We all have that because that's what the word says. And so he just tells Peter, Peter's having a day. He don't even, he's so ashamed. It's just like that song, so ashamed. He felt so unclean. He felt so unworthy to be around the Lord. He knew he blew it. You know, how many ever thought they'd have a trial and, and you, you thought you were better than that and you kind of maybe didn't get through the trial? <laughs> but he's exposing that stuff in us because of the dross. You know, how much we got to get that old dross out. So really the light in us can shine. And so once we get that dross out, Peter, he thought in himself, oh, I'll never deny you, Lord. I will never deny you. And honestly, he, knew, he, he thought that in himself. Jesus already says, Peter, I'm praying for you. Peter, I'm praying for you. Peter, I'm praying for you. So when the enemy comes to try to sift you, I'm praying for you. So Jesus, in his prophetic, he was already telling Peter, <laughs> you're going to blow it. You're going to blow it, Peter. You don't know it, but I already know it because he knew the hearts of men. But there he was on the shore. He didn't beat him down. You know, that's what we got to be with one another in the body of Christ. That's why we got to exhort one another. And we got to lift each other up and say, hey, it's time to move on. We can't do nothing about that here. We can't do nothing about that yesterday. We can't do nothing about a week ago. If you're still sitting something bugging you that happened over a week ago, you just can't let it go. Because he says, lay aside every sin, lay aside every way. He says, cast your cares upon him. And sometimes... We're, 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 we're so careful to be careful. <laughs> if that makes any kind of sense, we don't know how to cast the care upon him. Just because we're too careful sometimes to not make a slip of this and that. How many, don't you love grace? He has grace for us. And all these giftings. And I can read the whole list, but I'm just, I'm exhorting today. Since he, he tells us, he commands us, not forsaking the same way for ourselves together. And to exhort one another daily. And so anyway, it says 1 Peter 4.10. Each of you. That means every one of you in here. Each <laughs> of you shall use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Because they're all to serve the body of Christ. And to serve that lost and dying world out there. As faithful stewards of God's grace. And so when we're using that gift of exhortation or whatever gift that you may have, we're to use it with God's grace. Because the Lord, I can't get away from that expression. It says the Lord longs to be gracious to us. Longs to be gracious to us. But when you're not loving yourself, you can't receive His love. You can't receive the grace that He wants to bestow upon you when you consider yourself unlovely. He doesn't consider yourself unlovely. He just loves you. He ain't looking like, well, you're on a lovely day. I don't want to be around you. <laughs> God's not like that. God's not like that. We don't know why that waiter's cranky today. We don't know why the bus driver's cranky today. We don't know why that mother's screaming and yelling her kids and we're accusing her of being a bad mother. Maybe she just, we, we, we don't know. So we just don't know what's happening in people's lives. And we can make quick judgments, quick judgments sometimes, and thinking, oh, look at her. Well, look at her calling her kid that name. I know. But I don't know nothing about that woman. I don't know nothing. And we're so quick to judge instead of giving grace, instead of being that one to come alongside and say, is there anything I can help you with? To that mother has got three kids and she's trying to control them. We don't know. We don't know what's going on with that woman's day. But just to come alongside and say, how can I help you? And just smile at her. Because she's all like this anyway. <laughs> she needs a smile. Sometimes it's just a smile and an offered ask. But we just walk on by. We're kind of like the, the Levitical Levite priest sometimes. And just walk on by. And we're so quick to walk on by sometimes because we're in our own stuff or it's our own bad day. Why well, we got to offer? Because we're in our own self-pity party <laughs> sometimes. 
Well, we got to snap out of it. Because to really exercise those gifts, we're to be looking for every opportunity, whatever gift that you may have. And so Galatians 4.19, this is Paul. He was an exhorter. My little children, on whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. Isn't that what we truly want for one another? That Christ is so formed in us. They don't, they even see beyond their gifts. They just see the gift, Christ. Christ. They just see him. Just like I think it was Peter in the Gospels, that they took note that they had been with Jesus. That they just been with Jesus. And he says, Paul worked night and day. Warning every man and all wisdom that we may present every man perfect and mature in Christ Jesus. And that's what the giftings are for us too. So we don't get down, down, down and have to take ten people to pull us back up. <laughs> we are to come alongside our brothers and sisters. And so we really do need, and, and I apologize, I need to call them anymore just check on you. Just to check on you and say, how you doing? You know, we get Facebook, but we, we don't ever make these little personal phone calls anymore. We just do Facebook anymore because we're not really face-to-face -face with people anymore. Aren't you glad God just doesn't give us emails? <laughs> and text us? <laughs> oh, by the way, look by your mailbox. You got a letter. <laughs> face to face and when we can get in the presence of God more then we'll be able to mirror more face to face to other people and so I know this past week and being a, like this little flower that's been transplanted it's, it was very hard honestly to get in the presence of God I was in, even though there are people I know and this and that but being out of my environment it's just like Lord Lord I, I don't know how to do it the one home, and I want to mention names and that, but the one home, I'm coming out like this. I'm getting out. I'm just, <laughs> I'm all just.